Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rini, this is the Enchanted Planner, and today we are going to be talking about five ways to use inks in your planner. So we're gonna start off with some of the tools you'll need. Obviously you would need inks, you'll need blending tools, and your planner. That's pretty much it, <laughs> okay? We're also going to talk about what the difference is. So the only the only color I have in both an ink and an oxide is the tumbled glass. It happens to be one of my absolute favorite colors in the Ranger Tim Holtz line. Ink dye inks. So the distress ink means that when you use it as a stamp medium, it gives a really crisp image, but it absorbs into the paper. So it's really quick to dry and the color will change slightly as it absorbs. Whereas with a pigment-based ink, this sits on top of the paper. It's perfect for heat embossing and the color stays true. Alcohol ink switch, this, so this is an alcohol ink or a dye ink. This is um, pigment ink and this is a solvent ink. Now it stays on is not something I would really use in my planner because I'm afraid it would bleed through. Where this ink is generally used is if we're gonna stamp on things that are hard to take um, ink mediums like acetates or any kind of plastic, uh, shrinky dinks, that the shrinky dink paper, whatever that stuff called, I can't remember, but that's where this is really useful. Not so much on my planner, no, no, no. <laughs> Okay, now there is a whole world of things that can be done with these inks. And I'll also say, I'm showing you distress inks, but you don't have to have distress inks to do these techniques. Any pigment-based ink and any dye-based ink will work and your inks will stay on them if they are dye-based or pigment-based. So really anything you have in your stash is perfect to use. But I'm gonna keep it simple today as we're focusing on using inks in our planners. <laughs> If you're interested in getting more familiar with stamping in general, one of our community members has a really great channel. Um, I will link Misty's channel down in the description. She's the jolly fat elf. Okay, so what do we got? We've got inks, we've got oxides. You guys have seen me use these a lot in my planners, <clears throat> a lot. <laughs> so let's go to examples, shall we? So in here, I use them as a stencil to ink right onto the paper, and then I paired it with punched images from paper. That's one. Oops, dropped my planner, hold on. <laughs> it's always an adventure around here. In this one, I used it to create an entire under the sea water type look. It's okay. It doesn't necessarily do all that well after going over things like the Uniball Signo I, or you know, using it like with correction tape, but I didn't really wanna have to put label paper down and then recreate an entire monthly to create this. So I was okay with this, but this is an example of using it entirely as a background in my monthly. In this one, I've used it two ways. Well, similar, but they're sort of different. I've used it to create distress look. By inking the edges, I've now created some depth. I've now created some depth with simply some card book or cardstock paper and I took it along the edges here as well. And then on the next page, I've used it here to create that same kind of depth, but with layering cardstock. So actually this is a paper bag. So it looks like there was actual ground in the next example, we have one of my favorites. I was very, very surprised how well the ink took to label paper. So I didn't want to cover this whole thing up with ink, but I also didn't want to create it and have to recreate my weekly on label paper. So I opted just to sort of create this sort of little under the sea thing as if this was sort of a fish tank, <laughs> a little fishy tank. But it's cute and I love the way this looks on the label paper. It took to the label paper way better than even the regular paper. And in this example, I've used it to create a very slight look of a blue sky, going heavier in the color at the top and then sort of phasing it out as I came down the page. But there's so many different ways you can use these inks. Okay, first thing that we're gonna talk about is backgrounds. So we'll take some of the tumbled glass and I'm gonna use my blending brushes because I love these guys. 
have to remember I just re-inked this so it's probably going to be pretty <laughs> pretty 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 heavy duty. Tumbled glass is such a light color but it's so so pretty. And then we just blend around okay so you can see it's kind of subtle right so let's get some more ink. It's quite subtle. Now we're going to go into the same color in the tumbled glass. And we're going to go right beside it. These are not the best colors to demonstrate this with because tumbled glass is so light, but it is one of my favorite colors. Oops, I'm sort of I'm being rough. <laughs> I have a heavy hand. <clears throat> okay, but you can see the difference in the vibrancy. This pigment based is far vibrant than this over here. So it's a this is a more subtle look. This is more pow, look at me, right? <clears throat> okay. We can also use these. Now I prefer my blending brushes, but we are going to take our hand at using these guys. So we'll come down here so it's a little bit separate. Now these create a little bit of a different look. As you can see, this creates more of a vibrant look right away with the alcohol, or sorry, the dye-based ink. I think dye-based literally means that there's alcohol in it <laughs> and my brain just doesn't want to remember today. So bear with me if you have a total stamping background and you they're like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. No, it's menopause. <laughs> it's menopause, baby, it's menopause. So we're gonna do the same now with the oxide. And we have two very different looks. Look at the difference in that. Beautiful colors though, right? Okay, so that's an example of just simply playing around and creating backgrounds. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is inking the edges. So we'll start again with the dye-based ink. And we're just going to come in here and that's literally all you do and you can go as heavy in as you want or as light. I generally like this more subtle kind of look but if you're looking for something that's a little bit shabby chic to put in your planner inking around the edges is a great way to do that as well as the next technique I'm going to show you. So at the opposite end we're going to use the uh, oxide. Now you can see the oxide is still slightly wet. It'll take a little bit to dry but it's not too much right? So this is simply, simply, right? That's all you have to do is ink the edges and you create a, a unique look and depth to any kind of thing you're working with in your planner. Next, we're going to do something that's fun and we're going to crumple the paper. <laughs> I'm serious. That's all you're doing is crumpling the paper. And we're going to talk about something called wrinkle distress, which again is way more along the lines of that shabby chic kind of look. So let's really beat this guy up. The, the more you crumple him, the better, at least in my opinion, because it gives so much more uh, diversity to the edges. Look at that. Nice and fun. Good. Okay, so we're going to get this guy and we're going to get him with the ink. And we're just simply going to run the ink pad over the top. And wherever those raised edges are is what the ink will pick up. And then we're going to do the same at the opposite end with the oxide. Oh, this side's not very crinkly. Let me fix that. Let me fix that and crinkle him up some. Okay. Even tore it. Look at that. <laughs> and then we'll bring this guy in at this side. And the one thing that's kind of nice too with these is as well, when it's still wet, you can blend it in and create. I waited a little bit too long with the other one but I've got a little bit of ink hanging out from the other so you know but you get this nice unique look right so it's just other things you can do get yourself outside of the box when it comes to planning because I know I get stuck right like I get bored and I get stuck or I have no ideas on what to do for certain things so sometimes just bringing out another medium helps okay the next thing we're going to do is you can use these inks um, for painting and I'm going to show you that. So we're going to take the tumbled glass in the oxide and I'm going to grab one of my acrylic blocks. You could do this with whatever. I'm just going to just going to sort of stamp my ink pad here or my inking block. Oh my gosh, stamp block. 
Then I'm gonna spritz ever so slightly a little bit of water on there as well, because I'm gonna now use these as watercolors. I'm gonna use the ink, to, or the water to pick up the ink. I'm gonna come in here, and you can actually use them as water. Now, I'm a little bit reluctant to use water directly on my planner pages for obvious reasons, but you could paint on something else and then bring it in. But you see now we can use them literally as like watercolors. But like I said, I probably wouldn't paint directly onto my regular planner pages. I would paint an image and then bring it onto the planner pages because it's gonna warp, right? So there's another fun thing that can be done. Just clean off my, clean off my block here. And the great thing about these is, is they don't bleed through. Well, other than that one bled through. Apparently I was, oh, I was using the blending tool, this guy. I don't generally ever use these. I only ever use the brushes and I have never had those bleed through the paper. So that's something to keep in mind as well. <clears throat> is I think I went a little bit heavy handed with him and that's why it bled through a bit. But normally I use these guys. I find these easier to control. I just, I, I love the feel of them in my hand. I love the way it glides across the paper. These guys I find stick a bit. So it's a preference, but I prefer the blending brushes. And I've never had those bleed through my paper. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to use our inks for stenciling. So I've created a little bit of a mock grass here at the bottom, if you will. And like I said, I don't have any green, otherwise I would use green. I don't think I have any green. Oh, I have salvaged patina. Maybe we'll try that one, but I don't have it in on oxide. So we're just gonna stick with our blues. I'm gonna pick up a bit of the ink and I'm gonna come in here using my little stencil. And I've made some grass. Like if you had green, it would be like cute, right? <laughs> I use those, I use this template in one of those spreads I showed you for the snowflake. So let's do these. We're gonna do the oxide on this side. Let's use the oxide to do some snowflakes over here. Okay, then we're gonna come over and get the distress ink and we'll do those in the next column. <clears throat> and then you guys can get a good, oh my gosh. There we go. <laughs> I haven't had any issues with that for like months. And then all of a sudden I'm like a tickle. I think it's my allergies. Okay, so um, we're going to use the inks now. And then we'll move over and we'll do this guy. And there you can see, right? It's very pretty. It doesn't bleed through. Not with these guys. I think these apply the ink in a more even distribution, especially for someone like me that has a very heavy hand because I can sort of control this a little bit better than I can this stabby thingy. <laughs> but they're really pretty, right? And then the last and final thing you can actually do with them, of course, is stamp. So I've got a stamp set I've had in my office already from an earlier project I did with you guys. So we're just gonna pull out, I think, the sentiment stab. Let's do this one. We'll do, you're fabulous. <laughs> okay, we're gonna use the tumbled glass in the oxide first. And we're gonna ink this up really well. Okay, and then we'll type, you're fabulous. Nice. And then we'll do the same in the tumbled glass should probably clean that guy off in between so we don't have an ink issue. Okay. Then we'll ink this up with the Distress ink. Come on, take the ink. Why are you being so difficult? Um, it looks like we're fairly evenly covered and we'll do that guy here. You're fabulous. So if I wanted to emboss this, it would be better with the, the pigment-based ink, but we're not embossing, so I'm not worried about it. And because those are both such light colors, we're going to pull out something that's darker. We'll do, what have I got? Ooh, Mermaid Lagoon. Maybe that'll work, because this has got a lot of undertones of green and such in it. 
So we're going to ink up the Sky with Mermaid Lagoon. And this one should show up pretty good. So let's put our ink back in the thing. Now again, this is a Distress ink, not an Oxide. Ooh, nice. Yeah, so you can actually use it for actual stamping. I was a little bit wiggly with my <laughs> stamp application of pressure, so it looks a little bit looks a little bit rough, but you get the general idea. And like I said, the only thing I really wouldn't do directly onto my planner pages is painting. You can also um, spritz inks with water and there's a whole other gamut of techniques that can be done but I wouldn't do those in my planner so we're not going to cover them today. If you guys really like this video I could do another one which would be like a part two. I figured I'd keep this fairly simple and planner related uh, just to keep it sort of in our lane right in our wheelhouse. But that is a wrap you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. Have you ever used inks in your planner? Is there something you do that I haven't covered? I'm interested to see because like I said, I, I try and keep it simple at, at all times because you don't want to get too complicated when we're talking about planner stuff because we're not going to do a lot of these techniques in our planners because they're they wreck our planner pages. <laughs> I'm always protective of my planner pages. All right, you guys, that's a wrap. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button on your way out. If you're new to the channel, drop us a comment down below letting us know your news so we can formally welcome you to our wonderful community. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time. Ciao.